This is Chris, the Idaho painter, and this is me. <laughs> it's John, Journeyman John. That's what we all know him by. But anyways, we're here today and we are reviewing a product. What are we reviewing, Juan? It's super paint. Super paint. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that. So, that just that magic so, happened for free. This is how dedicated we are to bringing you reviews and let you know um, how good we think products are and whether you should use them or not. It is 11.30 at night. It is. And we're painting we right are. now. We are using super paint. Well, we're not painting. Zach's painting. Zach and um, Brett and... Um, <laughs> and Lucas are painting. We're standing here making videos. But we have, here's the colors. So we got gray right behind us. Here's a gray. We've got blue right there. And then we've got yellow. So um, we've kind of covered all our bases. With, um, we've, we've got some extra whites, um, some deep bases, and um, extra white and deep. So to start off, um, John, why don't you tell me a little bit about the yellow? I haven't used the yellow, so John, how's the yellow performing? You know, yellows across the board are typically going to be one of the more difficult colors to paint, even whether you're spraying, whether you're rolling, brushing, um, just due to kind of the strength of the pigment and the way the pigment tends to flow in um, pretty much any base. If you're lucky, the product line that you're using has a light yellow or a some sort of a vivid yellow, depending on what color you're doing base, where it's already kind of pre-tinted in a way, and it's gonna cover a lot better. No such luck today, we're working with an extra white base, which means this is not going to cover very well. So, um, we never did say who um, makes this paint, makes super paint. Sherwin-Williams. Sherwin-Williams, so this is Sherwin-Williams super paint. And um, so, uh, it is a paint and primer in one, so. Yes. Everybody kind of knows what we think about paint primers in one. Do if they? you don't, John will tell you. We don't care for them. There is no such thing as a paint primer in one. But this is a paint primer in one for um, those people that it does matter for. Um, there you go. It has a limited, it has a life, not a limited lifetime, it has a lifetime limited warranty. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but this is a lifetime limited warranty. Um, if you like this video and want to see more videos like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can find out when more sweet videos like this come out and you can check them out. John is kind of like the spec guy. You like typically read all this stuff on the back. Did you read anything that stood out to you that you want to tell the viewers here? You know, like Chris already mentioned, this is marketed as a paint and primer in one, and I think that's the big push with Super Paint as opposed to some of Sean Williams' other product lines like Cashmere, Duration, things like that, that have um, maybe more unique characteristics. I think this is just kind of a middle to, maybe they're trying to push it to a middle upper end paint and primer in one. Uh, you know, my guess is it, it does do well, probably sealing surfaces like drywall, top coats well. You're probably not going to get a ton of life out of it like you would with a, another higher end paint. But for the price point, it's probably pretty decent as just a standard acrylic paint. I think we pay right around $30 a gallon for that. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Um, my guess that probably means it retails around... 55 to 60, give or yeah. take. I think we pay the same uh, for this as we pay for cashmere, which is a product we do um, really, really like. And I think we, in another video, I think we gave it a five star rating. We did. So um, here we're using a satin, and this is an interior acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. So um, that means you clean up with water. I mean, yes. I think we all know that. Uh, I had the opportunity to use the gray today. And I saw, watched some guys using it, and I, saw, I noticed that this one splattered really bad. I noticed there was splatter all over our gray trim and stuff, so I'm not, is that a little bit unusual or pretty standard with the yellow? You know, with the yellow, there's lots of yellow in this, because this is a white base, and you're trying to pump that much yellow pigment into it, it doesn't cover well, it thins out the paint, the yellow is really runny. Again, it's not really surprising, because it's gonna happen pretty much on any paint line that you're working with, uh, but it was, it always stinks when it, it, 
didn't really meet my expectations with what I was hoping for a yellow color. Yeah, we used a microfiber roller, so we used that high quality roller. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that with, you know, a high quality paint, or if it is a high quality paint or not, you know, I, I would have thought we would see less stippling. How, what was, what was your thoughts on how well it covered? You know, the, the gray, seems to cover pretty well. Again, that has more to do with the pigment ratio and the different pigments used than it does with um, maybe the product itself. I wasn't super impressed with the yellow and the, the deep blue um, seemed to cover well, although again, it did take multiple coats to get that together. So I, I painted it to gray, I rolled it, I brushed it, and I, there's something I do like about it. I like the consistency of the product. Um, I don't think it was too thick, and I don't think it was too runny, the gray. And the gray was in an extra white base, and so I like that. I did like the dry time. I think it didn't dry too fast, and I didn't do dry too slow. Um, had plenty of working time with it, and it's really hard to say how it flowed and leveled out, because whoever painted this place before did really bad. Um, the, the walls uh, were stippled. The trim was all brushed and rolled, stippled really bad. It, it was literally an absolute mess. So it's really kind of hard to tell how it seemed like it flowed and leveled out, you know, pretty nice. The gray didn't splatter at all. I was using it coupled with a Corona brush, a Corona Tynex nylon brush. Is that, um, I think that was the brush I was using. And the combination of that brush and this product worked really well. Um, I was going around and um, doing a lot of the cut-ins and, and doing the trim work on the, the rail, the cap rails and stuff. And, I liked it. Eventually, the brush got a little bit too soft, but um, I think I don't think one time did I have any drip off my brush. So I really liked that. So as I was dipping it in my cut-in bucket and pulling it out, never once had it drip. I mean, I, I would lift it up, and I liked the hang time that I had on the brush. So um, and I thought, I mean, I was going in the ideal situation because it was this was dark gray, and I was going a lighter gray over a dark gray. So I think that was a pretty favorable condition. But with the brush I was using and this product, it was covering in one coat. We had to go back and just touch up a few places and stuff. But, you know, um, I did like, so there, there's some things I liked about it. Yeah, um, I think there are certain places where this could be used. Uh, like Chris said, our price point for cashmere and for super paint is the same. There are some jobs I would probably spec out or lean towards super paint more than something like cashmere where uh, you, you maybe do need a thicker or a heavier bodied paint uh, to help seal things up again kind of like that paint and primer in one although i would still disagree with what they're trying to get at um, yeah. but I, I think there are certain instances where i would probably favor a product like this over a product like cashmere where it's a little bit thinner and has more of a self-leveling capability um, but I, I probably would not go towards this product if i yeah, and I think, I mean, for me, I, I wasn't rolling or brushing the yellow on, but I watched it be applied, and it was, I, this was a yellow wall, like kind of a faux painted yellow, and I, I, um, I think it was two coats on some of it, even maybe there might have been three coats yeah. on some of it, three coats, and I just think a yellow or a yellow, I don't think um, the coverage was very good. I think, you know, it could uh, do a lot better, especially in a white base. So. To me, that kind of knocks it down a point, and just I thought, you know, with you know, uh, a microfiber roller that has these little tiny little finger things is the way I understand it. It's kind of like kind of weird. It's fingers that like to grab on and hold on to things and not let go. You know, kind of weird. There's a really good joke in there, but, <laughs> but anyway, I just uh, I didn't think it would it should splatter as much. So I kind of like um, I just really don't like paints that splatter, and we found some that. Um, perform really well with the rollers we use, the high-end rollers and stuff that just don't splatter. And so um, I just wasn't impressed with that. But, you know, all in all, um, I, it was $30 a gallon, which I think, you know, for what you get, I think the price is a little bit high. But, um, so how many stars would you give this product? Oh, that's a good question. We always got to come down to that final thing. You know, how many stars would we rate it? I think because of the coverage, um, the, the inability to cover like it should for this price, and just the amount of splattering I saw with, you know, the white base, and um, I think that's kind of a theme with the extra white base. With um, sure, when products, the super paint, the super paint products, they splatter a lot, even with the exterior products. This wasn't. I'm not happy with that. I would give it three, three and a half stars is what I would rate the paint. Yeah. 
Uh, now, John, you have to come up with your star rating. I would. I would probably go about a three. I, I might bump it up to a three and a half. But I know I'm working with the yellow. I know I should expect that it's going to be difficult to work with. Um, I just. I wasn't as impressed with the, the hang time. I wasn't as impressed with the um, the build. Uh, this was a faux finish that was done, so there were some kind of funky, rough textures on it. I feel like it didn't build quite as, as much as I had hoped it would for as thick as I kind of felt like the product was, at least in comparison to some other products. And so I'd use it if I had to, um, but I'd, I'd probably rather use it if Oh, and you did say three. You did say three, three and a half. Three. three. You said three. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with you, it. you did mention something about right. And just looking right here, I can see some puddling coming down with the blues. I just I did notice that yeah. the hang time wasn't you know um, wasn't that great for a product. You know, at this cost and you know what it should be being super. And a and, lot of that's going to depend on, like we said, the color. Yeah. And so the, there will be variants on all product lines. Yeah. But. Um, we did have the temperature cranked up to like 70, it was hot uh, 72 had, or higher. We it's gave crazy. it every chance it could. We did. So there you have it. Would um, would you put it in your house, John? Would you use it? I There, there are other products I would use over this product if it were yeah. in my house. Um, if they gave it to me free, I probably would. <laughs> but sure. yeah, it's up, yeah. Um, but right. Anyways. <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> they, they charged. Us. They didn't. And they're not paying us to do this video either, unfortunately. Um, but uh, there we go. There's the review of Interior Super Paint. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider giving us a thumbs up and a like. Don't forget, we're on Instagram. We love Instagram. Idaho Painter. The Idaho Painter is Facebook. And John, you made your tools or not your tools or your store yeah we've so. got a store where you can get these shirts or hats um, or some of the tools that we feel like are, are especially helpful for painting professionals to get the job done to be quick to be efficient to make money and to have a better quality job you can find it on theidahopainter.com and best of all john made the store that's his it's handiwork so you gotta go support John. Yeah, and, um, and if it doesn't work, you know who to blame. <laughs> exactly. So don't blame me, blame John. But um, we do have a live show every Monday night at 7 p.m. And we, now we got a live show every Thursday at noon. Mountain time. Noon. Mountain time. Mountain time. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you on our next video.